Now we are going to see how the computers are classified. So this is a classification of computer. You can just see the computer majorly classified into four. One is microcomputer, next one is mini computer, the third one is mainframe computer and last one is supercomputer. This microcomputer is further classified into three. One is desktop, there is whatever that we are using in colleges, in our personal home, we say these are called desktop PCs, the desktop personal computers. You can just see the desktop computers will be having some components like you will be having three units, minimum you will be having three units, you will be having one monitor, you will be having one central processing unit, it will be either uh, bed form or it will be in tower form and next you will be having some input devices like keyboard, a mouse, a scanner, whatever it is. These are the things that you will be having in your desktop computer. And you, uh, the next classification in your microcomputer, it is laptop, this laptop. This is a portable computer which has all the features that uh, it can perform all the operations that a particular desktop can perform. But it is a, it is manufactured in a, with a different technology and you can carry this. The main purpose of this laptop you can carry with you and you can do all the operations that you can perform with the This image shows the desktop. The second image that you are going to see is the image of laptop. Now you can just see in this particular image you will be having a screen and you will be having a keypad and you will be having a thumb track all these things you will be having you can use it and you can just fold this particular laptop and you can carry it. This is possible with your laptop and all the operations that you are capable of performing it with your desktop PCs are also possible with your laptop. And next one is handheld. This is the picture of handheld computers. This is also called personal digital assistance that is PDAs. You can just see uh, this PDA will be handy, very handy. You can carry it in your hand and it will be having a pen like thing which we call a stylus which is uh, used uh, to, uh, to uh, yeah, communicate with the particular thing and that the handheld device will be having a screen, it is touch sensitive, you can, you can just operate with this particular stylus, with this particular, uh, with this device and you can perform all the operations and for each and everything there are some specialized softwares that are available which you can employ and you can perform all the operations, whatever that you want to do. Coming to the next major classification, mini computers. This is mid-range computer. The operating speed will be between the microcomputer and mainframe computer. The mini computers we will be employing in universities, in colleges, in a mid-range enterprises, wherever we want to. We have uh, some application where we'll be storing a huge amount of data, and uh, we'll be performing some applications. Uh, we'll be performing some client-server-based applications, and all these places we will be employing this mini computer. It is also called mid-range computer. And coming to your mainframe, this is the second largest computer that we have. It will perform pro processor intensive applications will be performed using the mainframe computers. For example, yeah, there is a, uh, you are going to uh, have a centralized uh, control for the reservation all over the country. Uh, you take for example it is a railway reservation and you can just you can just see minimum you will be uh, there is a, at least 20,000 computers will be connected of uh, online to this particular system and it should be able to process all the uh, clients request and it will be having very huge volume of data and all these data will be maintained in separate uh, uh, disk and we can also employ uh, something called RAID and we have different uh, type of uh, storing environment and uh, all these things are maintained by this particular system, mainframe system. And all these requests it will be given to this particular system and it will be processing and all the requests will be satisfied. To perform those type of operation we will be employing mainframe. Coming to supercomputer, suppose if you want to perform floating point operations, that is we call it as flops. 
Suppose you have million floating point operations that you want to perform, then definitely you need to go for supercomputers. This, this will be very, very large and you can just see uh, that is it will be occupying, uh, uh, there is a, if you have a dormitory, the full dormitory will be the size of this particular supercomputer. The size of the dormitory will be the supercomputer. And this is the picture of uh, example picture for a mini computer. And the second picture that you are going to see is the picture of your supercomputer. As an example, this is provided by one manufacturer and different manufacturers pro uh, uh, provide a different supercomputers and you can just see all those things. And these supercomputers are mostly used in uh, military purposes, satellite launching and all these uh, applications. There is uh, intensive process, intensive applications and uh, million floating point operation uh, like environment, whatever that requires high processing capability uh, will employ the supercomputers. The next topic that we are going to discuss is computer organization. We are not going to see in depth of each and every unit, uh, each and every part and how it has been organized. We are just going to see the outline, very basics of computer organization. Computer, no, we know it will process the data and it will give the information. So, information processing machine. It has some components and these components will work together to accomplish a given task and you just see if you give, if you ask the system to give a correct result, it will be giving correct result and if you ask it, ask the system to or if you instruct the system to give a wrong result, it will give a wrong result. So, whatever we say that will be followed by this computer. Since we have not reached the intelligent systems, in uh, there is a hundred percent uh, the system ca uh, cannot think. It can just try and uh, we, are, uh, we are working towards it. And these visible components, this will be communicating in particular angle to give the result. The first unit, we call it as input unit, which will get the input from the end user or from other system and it will be giving the input to the central processing unit. First is the input unit, second is the central processing unit. We will discuss each and every unit in detail. Second is the central processing unit and after processing, it will be sending the output to the output unit so that the user can just view the output. Now, you can just see what are all the types of inputs that we can have. Now, we are having there is a, uh, with your computer you will be having two types of input devices. One is the keyboard, next one is the mouse. So, from keyboard if you are getting some input, that input will be sent to your central processing unit. And central processing unit, it has two major parts. One is control unit, that is CU, it is control unit. Next one is arithmetic logic unit. These two are very important parts of your processor. Apart from that, we will be having a separate set called register. It is a high speed memory which will be used by the processor. And the information that is uh, sent through the input unit will be received by the register and from register you will be able to give the result to the output unit. You can just see the solid line will give you the data flow and these dotted lines will give you the instruction flow in this particular diagram. And you can just see the control unit. The main purpose of control unit is to control all the devices. It will be continuously giving instruction to each and every device and it works in two methods and uh, those are all uh, uh, just beyond this particular scope. This control unit control the arithmetic logic unit, controls the register, control the input unit and controls the output unit. Now, as soon as you give some input, this control register, well, uh, what it will be giving some information that this input uh, should be sent to the 
this register. And after that, this register will give this particular information to arithmetic logic unit for processing. After processing, again, this arithmetic logic unit will give the result to the registers and this register, uh, the output that is available in the register will be sent to the output unit. Now, what is this ALU arithmetic logic unit? In arithmetic logic unit, you have two types of processing that will be performed. One is arithmetic operation, next one is logical operation. What is this arithmetic operation? That is those operations that we do in mathematics, that is addition, subtraction, division, multiplication and all these things are arithmetic operation. So this unit is responsible for performing these operations. Next is logical. That is greater than, less than, and, or, okay, all these operations will be performed in logical. So, after performing this, this will be storing the uh, values in the register. You have different types of register like program counter, memory address register, memory buffer register, and accumulator. These are the uh, few registers which we have in your central processing unit. For example, the CPU, for the arithmetic logic unit, it will get the data only from that particular register which we call as accumulator. Suppose you are performing an operation, okay, uh, like uh, add first value and second value and store it in a different value. What it will do, first the value of first variable will be sent to the accumulator. Next value of second value will be brought in and these two value will be added and after adding this value will be stored in the accumulator. After that this value will be sent to the output unit or some other variable which is responsible to have the value and all these operations will be performed. So this is how the organization of uh, the computer will and apart from this, uh, these things so this is with uh, respect to your processor. Your processor will have all these things, registers, uh, uh, so control unit, arithmetic logic unit. With your processor, you will be having a secondary storage, that is the magnetic disk which we have discussed earlier. This will have all the programs stored in it. This is a permanent storage. So all the programs will be available in this. Whenever you want, this information will be brought to your main memory. The processing will be done. And this secondary storage will be in the form of magnetic disk. Nowadays, we also have some more forms that are like compact disk and you have uh, the USB that is we call it as pen drive and other ports where you can just take the copy of this particular information and you can store it in permanently. And coming to your output unit, our, we have discussed input unit, what are the types of input units that we have, that is we have keyboard and mouse and all these things we are using and how the central processing units it will work and the last one is output unit. See, the monitor is one form of output unit where you will be getting the soft copy of the result. The next one is the printer where you will be getting hot copy. Nowadays, we have the touch panel monitors. There is touch sensitive, there is you can use the monitor as input device. That is also possible. So, in that particular case, monitor will act as both input and output device. So, this is the basic computer organization and components and how these things work together to accomplish a task.